It's commonly said by uh, a Christian a Christian critics of Islam and atheist critics of Islam, um, like Jay Smith, uh, David Wood, uh, Ivan Warwick, uh, etc., etc., that not only uh, not only is the Quran not preserved uh, by manuscript form, but it's not it's not preserved by oral oral form either, and that's completely false. I'm going in this video. I'm going to be talking about the Quran's preservation, not only through manuscript form but through oral form as well. So here we go. Uh, I won't be talking much during this video. I'll just be sharing my thoughts on, uh, on, on very few clips. But uh, I just want to say that the Quran was revealed as an oral message and not as a written message, as you've just seen in those Quranic verses uh, a little bit ago. Uh, and the Quran was revealed in different dialects. And uh, the Quran's, the revealed Quran was revealed in the, the Qureshi dialect. Many early Quranic manuscripts predate the uh, Sana manuscripts. Let me walk you through these. The first we have. According to Dr. Tyre Eklot, it is my right to say that it belonged to the second half of the first century after Hijra. Uh, copies attributed to Uthman and Ali. Page 14 by Tyre 
uh, egg, uh, egg look, and it contains 99% of the Quranic text. It is a complete manuscript of the Quran as the Topic manuscript, and it is identical to today's Quran as well. طيب الذي اكتشفنا في في الخط الاول من القران اللي يعني تحتاني انه تبديل مش كثير يعني فيها لكن موجود موجود يعني ما في شك يعني مش هو لكن الواضح انه لا يزال القران يعني هو قرآن في مجمله في مجمله
It was narrated that Aisha said, The verse of stoning and of breastfeeding an adult ten times was revealed, and the paper was with me under my pillow. When the Messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death, and a tame sheep came in and ate it. The seventh century version of the dog ate my homework was apparently a sheep ate my Quran verses. Traditional understanding of Ahruf al Qiraat cannot answer some of these pressing questions that are now being poked by our uh, people outside of, by our academics, not our, by their academics outside of the faith tradition. Pause, See, please. There's always some respect that we have for the Quran. We should. In a Muslim environment, we'll press a little bit and then we'll say, okay, khalas, samirna wa Allah. And that's great, alhamdulillah. When you go to academia, they don't have that red line. And they're going to. Okay. Pause that. with no clothes. They're going to just point out, no, that doesn't make any sense. Well, that's not true, and this and that. And they'll bring issues, which I'm not going to mention explicitly, that you know are true because they're in your own books. They're not inventing anything new. They'll bring you riwayat, and they'll bring you athar, and then you add to that very well-known issues of, I don't even want to be explicit. Then you bring on top of that makhlutat, and then and then. And it's very Stop. clear to Can you, you pause. every single... Dr. Qadi, if you don't want to be explicit, don't talk about this. If, I mean, if you talk about these things, the Dr. Qadi keeps saying that I don't want to be explicit. I don't want to be explicit. If you don't want to be explicit, don't talk about these matters because you're confusing people out there. People don't know what you're talking about. We know. I know what you're talking about. Okay. But people don't know. The awam, the masses don't know what you're talking about. So my request from Dr. Yasser Qadi is that he needs to come out and needs to clarify more in detail as to what he was talking about exactly for the people to understand. Right. And we have... And go ahead, please. Academy, uh, that they're bringing forth issues. Their level of now knowledge is leaps and bounds above what it used to be, you know, hundred years ago. What is happening in the last few years? It's not me anymore. It's the Western academics. These these problems are now becoming mainstream. And by and large, our ulama in the Eastern world are not aware, by and large, of what's going on in the Western side of things. And they're not. Okay, pause there, please. Dr. Yasser Qadi is simply, uh, I'm not going to say he's confused. He's a learned man. And I wish um, he was challenged on this by Muhammad Hijab. Okay. Uh, when he says uh, our scholarship is unaware, he, I, I don't know what he's talking about. Wallahi, there are chunky volumes written on Kiraat. And Western scholars are miskeens. They are relying upon information that comes from our scholars. Where are Western scholars getting information from? Are they digging? Uh, do they have these Indiana Jones hats on 
and they go to the Middle East and they start digging in the mountains and the caves and they're finding new texts and new books uh, and they're basing their theories on those. Oh, all what is coming from Western scholars is based upon entirely from our scholars, from the Arabic works written by our scholars mm -hmm. in the classical period and in the modern period. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Dr. Yasser Qadi is talking about, that our scholars are not aware of these problems. They are aware of every single problem, if you want to call it a problem. Okay, mm -hmm. the questions Western Orientalists are raising about the exact nature of, for example, the Ahruf, okay, are not new questions. They are known to the scholars of Islam. They are the ones who transmitted these questions and these opinions, right? As I said, they have no bearing on the text of the Quran, the physical text, the morphology, the consonantal ductus, the consonantal skeleton of the words of the Quran, as we saw mm -hmm. on the screen. Okay, um, let's go. Let's go. That's, that was the end of the video. That's the end of the video. Um,